Let me explain. What is it to me to be? What does it mean to be the seed of the serpent? Genesis 3, 14 and 15. We're going to wrap it up and we're done. I, ex punk, I didn't ask for what you believe, so don't ask mine. All right. Genesis 3, 14 and 15. Again, let's go back and I'm going to explain to you what the Bible says. How do you become a seed of the serpent versus being a seed of God? Is it because the serpent had sex with Eve? And God are pregnant with his physical seed? No, no. The seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, which is the seed of God, depends on whether you turn to Christ and are united to Christ or you turn away from God and oppose him. That's how you become the spiritual seed of God, the woman, or of the serpent. It has nothing to do with Satan having sex with you. Any more than God forbid such blasphemy, our Lord, siring children through sexual reproduction. That's Mormonism. And Yahweh God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you more than any of the cattle and more than any, every beast of the field. On your belly you will go and dust you will eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. So the woman has seed, a hint to the virgin birth of our Lord. Because usually you talk about the man's seed, not the woman's seed. But anyway, future sessions, we'll get into it. So the woman and her seed do not belong to the serpent and his seed. They'll be in opposition and hate each other. That means the woman and her seed belongs to God. And the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent as he strikes his heel. Now, the first seed of Satan, first seed of Satan is Cain. Why? Because Satan had sex with Eve, got her pregnant? No, nothing. Watch, listen, Jay, everyone else. Here's how you become the seed of the serpent. God tells you in verse 7. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. So she gave birth to Cain from the man. Don't let anyone else tell you, you know that she was already pregnant with Cain. I have gotten a man with the help of Yahweh. In the next session, I'll explain the depth of this passage. Literally, it says, I have gotten a man, Yahweh. And there are targums that say that Eve thought she gave birth to the angel of Yahweh. We'll get into that. Don't think that Antonia Dodgers came up with that. Old news. We've known this since the 90s. The clown is nothing. He just repeats, regurgitates what he hears because he's not that bright. The Lord rebuke him to repent. And again, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Abel was a keeper of flocks. Now, did you hear that? She gave birth to his brother Abel. I thought Cain and Abel were brothers. Who said they're not, dude? Okay. Abel was a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a cultivator of the ground. So it happened in the course of time, so now they're grown up, that Cain brought an offering to Yahweh of the fruit of the ground. Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. Yahweh had regard for Abel and for his offering, but for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. Now why? A lot of people say, well, he didn't bring him animals. No, that's not it. Even in the law of Moses, you were to give your first fruits to God, your produce to God. Why would you expect Cain to give animal sacrifices when he's cultivating the ground? So he gave of the produce of the ground. Abel gave of his flock. That's why even the law of Moses, you are to give your first fruits to God of your produce of what comes out of the ground. It's because Cain's heart was not right. Cain was already exhibiting jealousy envy and hatred how do we know here you go god says it god says it i don't know if master miller is mocking if he is get him out of here abel was also brought of the first born of his flock into their fat and yahweh had regard for abel and for his offering but for cain and for offering he had no regard here's why here he explains it so cain became very angry and his countenance fell then yahweh said cain why are you angry why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? See, 
God was seeing his heart. There was something bad with his motives. And so he wasn't doing things from his heart. And God is saying, straighten up and you'll be accepted. But now notice the warning. When does Cain become the seed of Satan? When he allows sin to take control. Notice. And if you do not do well, sin is lying at the door and its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. This is how you become the seed of Satan. You caught it? You caught it? This is a warning to all of us. The more you give in to sin, the more you act on sin, the harder it becomes for you to resist sin. You then become like a drug addict where at first it's a choice and no longer it's a choice and now chooses you and controls you. And now you're enslaved to sin, hardened in sin, and powerless against sin. And now you belong to the evil one. Right there, it says it. But as long as you resist sin, confess your sin, acknowledge your sin, and cry out to the Lord for mercy, he will have mercy on you and sustain you. So now, did Cain listen to God or did he give in to sin? Okay, Master, it's okay. Well, we don't know if he didn't. Didn't say that. Don't read too much into the text, Master. I just said that. Please don't do that. All right. So did Cain take God's advice? No. He gave in to sin. He's saying, look, sin wants you. It wants to control you. You better conquer it, crush it, rule over it. It went in one ear out the other, because now watch. Then Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and it happened when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. See, he gave in. And notice his brother. How many times must you be told they are brothers physically? They are brothers physically, but they're not brothers spiritually. What I'm going to show you from Scripture is the most important relationship is spiritual. Your spiritual family, not your physical. Your brother can be going to hell. Your sister can be going to hell. Your spouse can be going to hell. But your neighbor down the street, she or he is your true brother and sister, and you're going to live together forever. That's the teaching of the Bible. If I have to explain flamboyant, I'm going to get to that lot here. He just told you, do well by not giving in to sin and hate. All right. And it happened when they were filled that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then Yahweh said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? How many times does God need to say, your brother, your brother, your brother? I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Okay. So do we see how you can be a son of God or a son of Satan, even though you have the same mother and father? Is it making sense? Do you understand? Don't be distracted. Focus. Are you seeing it here? And that's why we're told Cain was of the evil one. Let's see why. How do you become of the evil one? Spiritually by giving into Satan and sin. Here, let me show you. And then let me show you what our Lord says. And I, we're going to go a little deep and then we're going to make one more point. Okay, let's get it lined up so you don't think I'm lying. Sam, you're a liar, Sam. I don't see Jesus in you, Sam. Where's Jesus in Sam? Where's the love of Jesus? Jesus, where's the love? Okay, here you go. Here's how you know you're a child of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. This is how you're going to know. Everyone who does not do righteousness is not of God. That's the answer. It's not Satan has sex and gets women pregnant. And God doesn't have sex to have children. It's spiritual seed, as well as the one who does not love his brother. For this is a message which you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain was of the evil one and slew his brother. How many times does it need to tell you that Abel was his brother? But because he gave in to sin, he became the seed of Satan. So who was Satan's first child? First offspring, 
Kane. Kane. He's the first son of Satan. Exactly, Russell. I'm getting there. Be patient. I'm going to show you that. I'm getting there. Legacy Standard Bible, Samuel. All right, now listen. And for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. See, again, his brother. If you do what is righteous, you have the seed of God in you. If you do what is evil, you have the seed of Satan in you. And here, how do you know whether you are of God and not of the devil? Here, Mark 3, 31, 35. You guys listening, right? Mark 3, 31, 35. Then his mother and his brothers arrived, and standing outside, they sent word to him, calling him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Behold, your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you. And answering them, he said, Who are my mother and my brothers? You think just because they're physically related to me, that makes them my true brothers and sisters? And looking about those who are sitting around him, he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers, whoever does the will of my God, he is the will of God, my brother and sister and mother. Did you caught it? You want to be a child of God? You do his will. You don't do his will, you're a child of Satan. Now, can children of Satan become children of God? Yes. Many of us were living in willful sin and children of the devil until we were set free. Yes. That's the good news. You don't need to be a child of Satan. But the more you give in to sin, the more you justify sin, the more powerless you become against sin, the more you love sin, the more sin becomes encrusted in you. And the more you hate the things of God, so you reach a level of reprobation where you now so grieve the Holy Spirit and blaspheme the Spirit that now he hands you over and it's too late. We got it now? Yep, you got it. You got it. Parental advisory. God bless you. You got it. That's not Calvinism. Now watch though. I want you to catch the brilliance of our Lord. Did you notice who's missing in this list? Hey, if you do the will of God, Crystal, you can be my sister. And if you're old as molasses like Nina, hey, Nina, if you do the will of God, you can be my mother, Jesus saying. You can even be my brother. But notice what he doesn't mention. You can be my father. Because one is his father, God. So Jesus has brothers, sisters, mothers, but he only has one father, that is God. See it? You caught it there? You see what he left out? You can be a mother to me, a sister to me, a brother to me, but I only have one father, God in heaven. Okay, now watch this. Physical descendants of Abraham. He says to them, you are of your father, the devil. In fact, let me get you the context, because this point I had to make, because when someone said, hey, I thought the Cain and Abel... And I said, where did you get me? Where did you hear me say they're not? Well, I'm because I'm a special kind of stupid thing. I don't listen. All right, here. Here's the proof. John 8, 39 and 44. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the deeds of Abraham. What happened to Martin Luther for sola fide? Yeah, Iggy, you beat me to it. You anticipated my objection. How come it's all doing, 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 doing? Do, do the will, do the deeds. It's all doing, doing, doing. What happened, Antonio Dodgers and Jamila White? You see it? But when you have Protestant lenses, you'll be blinded to these passages. But now you're seeking to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. This Abraham did not do, do. Now he's saying, if you're truly the children of Abraham, you're going to act like Abraham, behave like Abraham, have the deeds of Abraham. But instead, you're trying to kill me. Even though I'm a man who sent from God to tell you the truth, this Abraham did not do. This is where he blew their minds away. Abraham did not try to kill me, but you claim to be his descendants and you're trying to kill me. Now, the first question you should ask is this. Abraham had been dead for 2,000 years when Jesus said this. 2,000 years when Jesus said this. He's saying, you want proof that you're not really his sons, though physically his descendants? Flamboyant, get the out of here, please. 
get flamboyant the hell out of here before I have the Shia piss on him and do muta with his mother. Get him out of here. Get him out of here, Protestant. Do you want proof that Jesus is claiming to be God who's been there from the beginning? Watch. He tells the Jews, though you are physically his descendants, you don't belong to him spiritually. Why? You're trying to kill me. Abraham did not try to do this. Are you? Is it sinking in? Do you understand what he just said? Abraham did not try to do this. Abraham did not try to do what? Kill me, a man who told you the truth from God. But wait, Abraham's been dead for 2,000 years. Yes. How could Abraham not do what we're doing to you? Are you saying Abraham saw you? We're going to get there, right? Or if you're listening. Did you get this part? But now you are seeking to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. This Abraham did not do. Abraham did not try to do what you're doing. So what are you trying to do? Kill me. Abraham did not try to do this. That's how I know you don't belong to him. But wait, how are you telling me Abraham did not try to kill you? Abraham's been dead for 2,000 years. You only look 50. You're saying Abraham saw you? We're going to get there. I need you to focus. Okay? Watch. But now, who are they then? If they're not the children of Abraham, who are they? You are doing the deeds of your father. See? Like begets like. Kind begets kind. If you're of God, then you're going to be like God. Holy, righteous, pure, loving, bold, fearless. But if you're like Satan, you're going to act like Satan. So he's saying, see, you are like your father and you do the deeds of your father because kind begets kind, like begets like. They still don't know what he's saying, though. They said to him, we were not born of sexual morality. We have one father, God. Now they're taking a cheap shot at him. Do you know that? Eduardo, I'm going to get there. I'll show you. If you haven't watched my series on the Trinity Old Testament, you're lost, Eduardo. I've done millions of sessions on this. Now, you see they're taking a cheap shot on him. They're saying, hey, dude, we're not born of sexual morality. In other words, unlike you. You understand? They're taking a cheap shot on him because they've had heard rumors that Joseph did not sire him. So that's a cheap shot. Hey, buddy, we're not born of sexual immorality, all right? So I wouldn't go there if I were you. You catch it? John 8. Right? He's seeing, right? I mean, I, if I have to repeat myself, I will if you're listening. We were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, God. Now watch here. Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me because I'm the firstborn son. For I proceeded forth and have come from God. For I've not even come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I'm saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. Now, why can't they? Because they're so dead in sin and crusted to sin. They've gone to the point of no return. You are of your father, the devil. And you want to do the desires of your father. But wait, these are physical Jews, born of physical Jews, descendants of physical Jews. Is Jesus saying, no, Satan came and had sex with your mothers? How do you become the seed of Satan, a child of Satan? By not doing what God tells you to do and doing what Satan wants you to do, such as he was a murderer from the beginning, which is why you're going to try to kill me, and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him, which is why you have no love for the truth. You think I'm lying, and the lie you believe, you think it's true. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he's a liar and the father of lies. Do we now see how we become a son of God or a son of Satan? Everyone got it? Guys, is it sinking in so I can finish it? Now, just a side note, brownie point. When Jesus says right here that you are not really of Abraham because... Abraham did not try to kill me, and you did. What did he mean? John 8, 39, 40, here. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, if you are Abraham's children, you would do the deeds of Abraham. But now you are seeking to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, 
which I heard from God, this Abraham did not do. Abraham did not do what? Abraham did not try to kill me. But you are, because you don't belong to Abraham. All right, now, so then if Abraham did not try to kill Jesus, what did Abraham do when he saw Jesus? You don't need to guess. John 8, 56, 59, same chapter. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. You see, when Abraham saw my day and saw me face to face, he was happy. He was elated. Unlike you, you're trying to kill me. Abraham didn't try to kill me. In fact, let me tell you how your father reacted. He saw my day, and when he was given revelation of my coming, he was elated, and when I showed up, he was elated. So Jesus just told you, he saw Abraham, Abraham saw him, Abraham believed in Jesus, and knew Jesus would come as the Lamb of God. Therefore, Abraham was not religiously Jewish or Muslim, he was a Christian. Because they're thinking Rebecca's like your mother. When your mother was three years old and got molested by the Shia and gave a birth to a bastard like you. Anyway, everyone got it? Now the Jews are astonished. They're like, what? Wait, 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 wait. You're not yet 50 years old, man. You're a young looking Jew. So the Jews said to him, you're not yet 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? Now here's where Jesus corrects them. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, before even Abraham existed, I am. I already was existing and I continue to exist. In other words, he's saying, don't let my human nature, physical appearance mislead you. As a man, I'm not yet 50, but I'm more than a man and I'm much older than you think. I was even there before your father came into being. I was there when he came into being and I continue to be. Then they understood what he meant. And then they fulfill his words. What did he say they're going to try to do? You're trying to kill me. And voila, they try to kill him. Exactly what he said. Therefore, they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. He said, you're going to try to kill me. Some Abraham did not do. And voila, they end up doing what he just said. See it? All right. Now, did everyone understand that Jesus just told you what it is to be a son of Satan or a son of God. We can have the same mother. We can have the same father. We can be biological brothers, yet one of us belongs to God and the other to Satan. Right? All right. Now, here's the one that's going to level you, and then I got one point about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, one that I've been reflecting on so I can be accurate. I don't want to mislead. Okay. Get ready. Focus, because we got to go out with a bang. Right after this, I'm going to do the trib now, and we're done with Genesis. And I'll do Jamila White some other time. Pray for my health to get healthy, strong, and not sick. I'm all alone, brethren. No doctor, no health insurance by myself. That's right, Iggy. Now, Iggy, don't be so Iggy. Just help me up you. Stay focused, mister. Stop engaging other people, Iggy, before you're going to be Igged out of here. All right. Speaking to the religious rulers. Speaking to the religious rulers. Get ready to be blown away. Let's see if you're paying attention. Fill up then the measure of the guilt of your fathers. So Jesus is saying, how deep you want me to go into this? How deep you want me to go into this? Because we have a good crowd. Can I do another 30 minutes if you want me to do justice to this? You want me to go deep? Okay. Well, you asked for it. Okay. Watch here. Fill up then the measure of the guilt of your fathers. You serpents, you brood of vipers. How will you escape the sentence of hell? Notice, they are serpents and they are brood, the seed of vipers. You know why? Because he's now echoing Genesis 3. Let's see if you catch it. Okay. So I say, how deep you want me to go? If I go deep, I'm going to be fried, but it's worth it. May the Lord give me strength. I may have to come back and just nap and recover. Why did he call him brood of vipers? Now watch here. Get ready to be blown away. This is in the Bible too. Everything's in the Bible. We just got to learn how to unpack it. Okay. Matthew 23, 32, 33. So he's talking to physical Jews, the rulers. He says, you're serpents, you're brood of vipers. You will not escape damnation. Why? Because he's telling you, the seed of the serpent. 
the serpent, your seed. He's telling you they are the seed of the serpent. Like begets like, kind begets kind. You are serpents, brood of vipers, because your father is the serpent. Do you see the connection? You see the connection? Did everyone get it? He just said, you Jews are serpents. You're brood of vipers. Why? Because you're the seed of the serpent. You are his offspring. Though you're physically Jews and you think you worship the God of Abraham and part of the covenant, I'm telling you, you're not. You are of the serpent. You are his seed. And you're persecuting me, the seed of the woman. And you're going to persecute all who follow me. Because we are all the seed of the woman. Did a light switch go on or you guys went to sleep? All right, but now watch here though. What does he mean by fill up the full measure of your sin? I'm now going to show you from scripture. God in his forbearance has a limit to how much sin you will do before then he comes and destroys you. In God's forbearance, he waits patiently, but there's a limit, a, a debt ceiling. Once your sin hits that ceiling, God will now act to destroy you. So he's saying, you will be the one that will fill up the limit of sin. And once you do, that's when God's going to destroy Jerusalem and the temple because it ends with you. Fill up the measure of guilt. Started by who? Notice, it's generation after generation. It began with your fathers. It ends with you. Because you're the last generation that God will tolerate and put up with all the sins that generation after generation have committed. And now he's going to have to wipe you out because he's got to cut out that tumor, that cancer, that gangrene before it now pollutes the entire body. You caught it? Can you ask the people in the flood? When the flood came upon them, JW, and they'll be destroyed, were they forgiven? Zip the lip and focus. Okay, now watch. Watch, watch. You think I'm making it up? All right. Look what God says to Abraham. What, what does God say to Abraham? Why must Abraham wait 400 years for his descendants to enter into Canaan and take it? Here it is, Genesis 15, 15 to 16. Why didn't 16 show up, you little? That's why, because I put 16. Son of a whiskers. Son of a whiskers. Okay, right here. Why does Abraham have to wait 400 years before his descendants enter and take the land of Canaan? Here. Genesis 15, 15 and 16. I need you to listen, guys. Stop distracting. Philip, you know I got to get you out of here, brother. Don't ask me these questions, dude. As for you, talking to Abraham, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You'll be buried at a good old age. You're not going to see this. Why? Then in the fourth generation, which is 400 years, if you read the context from 12, your descendants will return here after they go into Egypt. For the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. Do you see why God is going to wait 400 years, four generations, before he brings Israel into the land? Because the Amorites, those who are in the land, he will wait patiently. And he's going to give them 400 years to get their act in order because they only have 400 years before now they reach the point of no return and now he has to wipe them out. In other words, God put up with the Canaanite sins, which are listed in Leviticus 18 and 20. If you read Leviticus chapter 18 and 20, he tells you the sins they were committing for those 400 years that God waited. Bestiality, sleeping with animals, infanticide, murdering children to their gods. Baal, incest, parents sleeping with children, brother, sister sleeping with each, with each other, homosexuality, lesbianism, idolatry, and murder. And God says, I'm going to wait 400 years, and then enough is enough. And their sins are mentioned, Leviticus 18 and 20. I'm not lying. It's there. Go read it. So you understand when say, oh, God, is a genocidal murder. Really? So he put up with bestiality, murdering children, 
incest, homosexuality, lesbianism, idolatry, murder for 400 years. And each generation continued the sins of the previous generation. And now when God wants to act in justice, he's now a genocidal maniac. Oh, Kika, you know, I'm going to get you out of here for that one, right? You caught it right there? So do you see that language again? For the iniquity of the Aram Amorite is not yet complete. What did Jesus say? Fill up, then, the measure of the guilt of your fathers. See? It's not one generation. It's generations. And Jesus is saying, you are the generation that will now reach the debt ceiling. It ends with you. Your fathers started the sins, and you're going to finish and end it because it ends with you because I'm not going to put up with you anymore. You see it? Is it sinking in? Another example, 1 Thessalonians 2, 14 and 16. Another one, in case you guys don't believe me. Here it is. Paul talking about what God is going to do to Jerusalem. No, Mimi. If it stopped, why are people still sleeping with their siblings? Mimi. Ah, Mimi. Ah. Are you sure you're not blonde, Mimi? Stuck for Allah. Stuck for Allah. Alzabillahi min Muhammad Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All right. Focus, guys. First Thessalonians 2, 14 and 16. Okay, watch here. Paul, look what he says in verse 16 about the Jews who keep persecuting the apostles, having them murdered in prison. For you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ, Jesus, that are in Judea. So you Gentiles who are churches, you are now following the footsteps of the Jewish Christians in Judea because you, like them, are suffering from your countrymen. For you also suffered the same things at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews. Now, gee, Paul is politically correct. Paul, you would make it today in political correctness. These Jews are the ones who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out and do not please God, and they're hostile men. They think all men are beneath them. Hindering us from speaking to them so that they may be saved. Now watch. With the result that they may always fill up the measure of their sins. Sounds like Paul is quoting Jesus. But wrath has come upon them to the most. To the utmost. Did we get it now? A theater, everyone. All, did you get it? There is a debt ceiling, a limit to how much sin God will tolerate and put up with you individually and collectively. As an individual and as a nation, as an individual, he can take you out when he's done with you. As a nation, it takes generations before he says, enough. Now I have to move in judgment. Do we see it? But I want you to see, before Paul said this, Jesus said this. The Jews in Judea killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. And they're filling up the measure of their sins. Jesus said that before Paul did. Let's go back now. Okay, let's read now. Yeah, and Elias, the only, only thing we believe is no one gives a damn about your opinion. No one gives a damn who you are, what you think. You're a fake, effeminate queer. You're not a Christian. Return to your environment, you scum. No disrespect to queer baits or effeminate or scum. Anyway, let's read, guys. And we believe you're a sissy and you're a fruitcake. Hey, uh, praise I am. Give News Unit this guy's address because I'm sure News Unit would love to make love to him. All right, everyone ready? You guys ready now for the shock? For the shock? The shocker? The shocker? The shocker? Mimi, Mimi, did you bleach your hair again? You guys ready for the shocker? All right. Let's see if you're paying attention. Fill up then the measure of the guilt of your fathers. What the heck, mister? Darn it. Darn. 
Now we know what that means, right? A debt ceiling. Jesus saying, you're that last generation. It ends with you. It's over with you if you don't repent. Because you're serpents, sons of the serpent, you brood of vipers. How will escape the sentence of hell? Now watch what he says. On account of this, behold, I'm sending you prophets. Jesus is claiming to be God because he does in heaven what only God does. In heaven, he sends prophets on earth. Who do you think you are? So he's telling them what they're going to do to fill up the measure of their sin. Here's what you're going to do. That you're now going to hit the debt ceiling where I'm going to be fed up with you and it's going to be over. I'm going to send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify. And some of them you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. Why? So that upon you may fall the guilt of all the righteous blood shed on earth. See, your father started the wickedness, murdering the righteous, idolatry, immorality, you name it. But it ends with you. You're going to be the last generation. And when you do this, upon you will fall the guilt of all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered, even though it wasn't them, it was their ancestors. But he's saying you're part of it. Because if you continue in your sin, you're complicit in their sin. You share in their guilt. Do you understand what Jesus is saying? That group that he's talking to did not literally kill Zechariah. But he says, you murdered him. Because when you follow in the footstep of your ancestors, the generation before you, good or bad, you share in what they did. And you take responsibility in what they did because you're following in their footsteps. Do you see how deep your Bible is? You see how deep your Bible is? Do you understand what you just learned? The Lord is sending you a message. If you continue in the deeds of your parents and their parents, ancestors, you then share in their deeds, you're complicit in their actions, and you share in their <clears throat> responsibility, good or bad. You see it? Whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. I don't know what's up with Texas Chick. She keeps engaging people. I rebuked her last time. I think I'm going to end up rebuking again. Okay. Exactly, Brandon. Yes, brother. That's the message of the New Testament. Why do you think the Jews hate the New Testament? Okay, now watch here. So what's going to happen? Whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar, truly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. What's going to come upon this generation? Jerusalem will be destroyed and the temple, and it ends for Israel. That's why you Christian Zionists and you Michael Brown really don't know the Bible. I'm sorry. Your love for Israel comes at the expense of the Bible. Look, he says, now this is going to happen to you. And it happened. About 40 years later, when Jerusalem temple is destroyed, fulfilling God's word, it's over. I do not work covenantally with Israel. I now work covenantally with the church and through the church to save all nations, including the Jews. Here he says it. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together. So don't blame me. I proved my love for you and my desire to forgive you and my heart's aching to gather you, but you don't want to have anything to do with me. The way her hand gathers her chicks and her rings, and you did not want it. Behold, your house, your temple, your land is being left desolate to you, to you desolate. But he's still giving them a chance. For I say to you, from now on, you will not see me until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And by the way, that was the last week Jerusalem saw Jesus physically. That's the week he gets killed. And he says, this will be the last time you see me. After this week, you will not see me again unless you cry out to me. So he's still giving them a chance. If you cry out to me and recognize who I am, you will see me again. If not, you won't see me again. Sadly, they did not reach out and cry out to him. So after that week, he no longer showed himself physically because after resurrection, he only appeared to disciples about 500 plus. 
You got it? So what did the Lord say would be the sign that it's done? They've reached the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling. When he destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, that means I'm done with you. You've now reached the full measure of sin. You've reached the full measure of your guilt, started by your ancestors, and it ends with you. You got it? Did it sink in? But I don't think you caught it. Because did you see what our Lord said? They will be complicit and they will share in the sin of their fathers. Because like their fathers, they're going to kill, persecute the apostles, the prophets sent from Jesus to them. Following in the same sin of their ancestors. Because he says, so that upon you may fall the guilt of all the righteous bloodshed. And one of their fathers is the one who killed Abel. Did the light switch go on? He says, you are the sons of these individuals who also murdered the righteous and the prophets. One of your fathers murdered Abel. Did the light switch go on? He's talking to physical Jews. He's saying, your ancestors, one of your fathers, murdered Abel. But that's Cain before the flood. And his seed was destroyed in the flood. Why is he saying that Cain is their father? Did you catch it? So that upon you may fall the guilt of all the righteous bloodshed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah. But wait, Lord, Cain killed Abel. Yes. But Cain's physical seed died in the flood. Yes. All the other descendants are from Noah and his three sons. Correct. And the physical Jews are from Shem through Abraham. Absolutely. But you said that their fathers murdered the righteous, and one of their fathers murdered Abel. Absolutely. But that's Cain. Cain is not their physical ancestor. Who said he is? I'm talking about spiritual seed, spiritual sons and daughters, spiritual brothers and sisters, the spiritual seed of Satan. Did it make sense now? You see what the Lord taught you? Your physical lineage means nothing. It's your spiritual lineage. You can be a physical Jew and you belong to Cain. And you can be a Greek and you belong to Abel, to Seth, to Adam, to Abraham, to Jesus. Sink in or no? Well, you think I'm lying again, right? Okay, well, here you go. Let me show you this. Where did I get that? I can be a Greek, a Syrian, but if I'm baptized in Christ... I am now the seed of Abraham. Here, Galatians 3, 26, 29. Galatians 3, 26, 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male, female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, if you're a Greek and you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. Right? See it? Yep. Wait, so who is the seed of Abraham? The one baptized in Christ. Even if he's ethnically a Greek. Really? Yeah. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Well, if you're a Jew and you reject Christ, then you have nothing to do with Abraham. You belong to Satan. And here's the proof. That's why Orthodox Jews hate the New Testament. And people like Michael Brown who try to soften it, their zeal for Israel is more than their love for the word. May the Lord have mercy on them. Here, let me prove it to you. The church in Smyrna, this is in Turkey. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, this is what the first 
and the last who was dead and has come to life says, I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews, but they're not. And their synagogue belongs to Satan. Could it, could, this is Jesus, huh? Jesus, Jew of all Jews, a physical Jew, is saying these Jews here, they blaspheme and they hate you because they hate me. And they're not really Jews. And their places of worship belong to Satan, not to God. No, it doesn't. Nowhere. Unless you're a Bible pervert and you pervert scripture. You got it? Oh, but wait. He doesn't just say it to the Jews in this area. Smyrna. Revelation 2. That was Revelation 2, 7, 9. Revelation 3. That was Revelation 2, 8 to 9. Sorry. But what about the Jews in Philadelphia? Revelation 3, 7 to 9. Revelation 3, 7 to 9. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Two different areas. Both of which have Jews. And what do these Jews have in common? This is what he who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, opens and no one will shut. And who shuts and no one will, no one opens, says, I know your deeds. Behold, I've given before you an open door. By the way, during this time, right, the bishop of Smyrna, the angel of Smyrna, would have been Polycarp. Polycarp, because he was the bishop. Anyway. I know your deeds. Behold, I have given you, given before you an open door, which no one can shut. And because you have a little power and have kept my word and have not denied my name. So you don't have much power economically, socially, militarily. But you've kept my word. And you have not denied me, even though they're threatening to kill you and imprison you. Behold, now watch. Two different areas. Jews in these areas. And what do they have in common? I'm giving up those of the synagogue of Satan. Who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. So they're not ethnically Jews? No, they are. But they're not true Jews in the eyes of God, because a true Jew is not ethnically, it's spiritually. You wicked Christian Zionists that try to make fun of us saying, replacement theology. No, you dumb bastards, we're being biblical. Now, what is he going to make these Jews do to the church? Notice, who is Jesus' people on earth. Okay, watch here. The church, right? What is he going to make these Jews who hate him, who've rejected him, who blaspheme his name and persecute those who love him? I'm going to make these Jews who are not really Jews. I'm going to make them come and bow down before your feet so they realize I love you. So Jews who rejected Jesus, Jews who hate Jesus, who are not really Jews, and their synagogues, are places where Satan is worshiped, not the true God. He's going to make these Jews bow down to the feet of the church so that the Jews realize, I, Jesus, love my church. No, but he loves the state of Israel. We got to pray for Israel. Baruch Hashem, let's send the money to get more bombs, to then bomb indiscriminately and kill another 30,000 and cause people to starve because that's all about Jesus. Really? You sick, wicked Bible perverts? You understand the New Testament is shocking? It's shocking because Jesus the Jew, Jesus the Jew, sorry, Noah, uh, unban Noah. That was a mistake. I wasn't trying to ban Noah. Jesus the Jew, let me go there. Sorry, Noah, I wasn't trying to do you. Says to these Jews, you're not really Jews. You're fake because you reject me. And your synagogue doesn't belong to God, it belongs to Satan. And the real people of God are those who are part of my church. And I want to make you bow down before my church that you're persecuting. So you, you know I love my church. You guys got it? You guys got it? So no, it's still back? Okay. Does it make sense or no? You see why when the Lord set me free from Christian Zionism, how disgusting and wicked and what a perversion of the Bible Christian Zionism is?
Everyone getting it? Okay, now, do we now understand how can Cain be the son of Satan if he's the son of Adam and Eve and the brother Abel? Because it's spiritual, it's not physical. You can have the same mother and father. We can be brothers biologically, yet one of us belongs to Jesus, the other belongs to Satan. Well, how do we know? The one who follows God has the seed of God in him, and he's a son of God or a daughter of God. The one who rejects the true God and follows whatever, that person has the seed of Satan, and they belong to Satan unless and until he or she repents. That's how. That's it. Is that clear? Because now I got to go to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're done. Is that clear? So I can wrap it up.